Everybody ready? Ready? Yeah. All right. Listen. It's your weekend show. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. With Bob Beerman. It's great. And welcome once again to your weekend show. I'm your host, Bob Bierman. So glad that you've taken the time to spend part of your weekend with me. It means so much when I hear from you about this show and how it has affected your life and and uh, how much you enjoy it and have shared it with your friends. If you're new to the show today and never heard of your weekend show, let me just kind of explain just a little bit about what you're going to hear. This program is about life. And the things we go through in life. Oh, we talk about current events from time to time and people in the news. We even have guests from periodically and hope to have some more guests on the program in the not-too-distant future. It's a program that looks at life from a realistic point of view. The only agenda that this program really has at heart is to do things to make your life so much better, and to help you find a better way. You can learn more about the program at our website, yourweekendshow.com, yourweekendshow.com, or find us on Facebook, also Your Weekend Show, all one word, Your Weekend Show. Every week we get a handful of more people that listen and, uh, and say they enjoy the program, And if you really do like the program, and if you've been listening for a while, why not share the program on your Facebook page with your family and your friends and encourage them to take a listen? This program is heard on the Internet, of course, and from our website and a couple of other locations now, including YouTube and Spreaker, and we're looking into a couple of more venues as well, and we'll be telling you about that in the not-too-distant future. And, of course, information about where you can hear the program to share it with others uh, can be found, of course, at our website. So I I hope you'll take a few minutes to go to the website. It encourages me when I look at the map of where people have checked in to the website. I stand amazed all over the United States, into Canada, parts of Europe, the Middle East, Australia, Australia. Caribbean. A number of you listen to the program on International Shortwave, and we broadcast basically four times currently over the weekend, and and hopefully that'll expand in the not-too-distant future to maybe a couple of more airings um, in the daytime. We can be heard at 9 o'clock Eastern time on the following three frequencies. 5850 kilohertz, also at 7455 kilohertz, and at 9395 kilohertz. Those are the frequencies you can hear your weekend show each and every week. I look at the map and I stand amazed. I look at some of the comments and the emails that you send. And and when you click on an email link from the webpage, Just so you know, it comes directly to me, and I'm the one that will see it. And if you have some questions about the program, questions about the things we've talked about, feel free to share, and I'll be more than delighted to write you back. This program is a labor of love. I've always believed in the power of international shortwave, and and I've watched how radio has changed because of the Internet. And we're taking advantage of those opportunities as well here at your weekend show. So take a few minutes, if you would, and let me know what you think about the program. Earlier this week, I ran into a a story that I saw. I I have a lot of friends that I follow on Facebook and who follow me, and and they'll make a post about something. And they, they, they shared a story that goes back to the 1950s. And you look up the information about this, and yeah, it's a very, very true story. One of a kind of a sad story in many ways as well. In the 1950s, the Forgotten War, the Korean conflict or police action, they never did declare it a war, but 
Still, millions died, most of them Koreans, in a very brutal fight with the Red Chinese and the North Koreans trying to overrun that land. Korea, both North and South at the time, had a very ingrained culture. Their religion is, you know, they follow, they're followers of Confucius in many ways. They have strong family and ethnic ties. In those days, it ruled their lives. Many people lived in smaller villages and not so much in the big cities. There were many taboos in that society. But during this time of the Korean conflict, many American soldiers would find the comfort of a Korean woman. And sadly, thousands of mixed-race children were born in Korea. These are children of GIs that served in Korea. The worst part is within the Korean culture is that they were not accepting, accepting the, of these mixed-race children that are not pure. They, they believe in keeping the family bloodline as pure as possible. And there now you have all these undesired children. There was a, a name given. They were called the dust of the street. They were considered alien devils by the people. They were scorned. They were ridiculed, and they lived in poverty and in shame for most of their lives. There's a story told about, a true story, about a young woman, this would have been somewhere around 1952, that spent time with an American GI hoping to find a better life for herself, but as most of the GIs did, they simply vanished and ended up going home, never to give it another thought. This one woman gave birth to a daughter. And, of course, being a mixed-race child, immediately rejected by all. Yet this mother loved this child and tried to raise this child for years, yet she was scorned and, and her daughter was just scorned and hated and despised. People would say to her, why didn't he not kill this, this alien devil, this dust of the street, this worthless human being? This mother struggled to make ends meet to feed her child for a number of years. And finally, the tormenting got so bad for this mother that she literally, when this girl was the age of eight, just let her out on the streets, not knowing what to do, not knowing where to find an orphanage at that time to take her in. And for the next year or so, this young girl, now age eight, lived on the streets, eating out of garbage cans, just trying to survive any way that she could. Yet anybody would see her would just spit at her and curse at her for being what she was, this mixed child. Finally, a Christian missionary found this child and was able to get her to at least an orphanage where she would be safe. She lived on the street for over a year, half starved to death, her skin covered with dirt and boils. Just a horrible-looking individual because of, the, of what she had endured on the streets. And she gets to this orphanage. She's there about a week or so, and word comes that there's a couple coming from another place. This is now probably close to around 1959 or 1960. An American couple was looking to adopt a son, and they were coming to the orphanage in a day or two to find a son. So uh, the girls, including this one that had been there just for a matter of days, uh, they helped to clean up the boys' rooms and help the boys look good and be prepared with clean clothes. Even this young little child 
age nine and barely weighing 45 pounds, did her part to help. She still wore the battle scars of of living on the streets, and she still knew that the other orphans that were pure Koreans even had a an ill feeling toward her. She felt abandoned, unloved, and, and useless. She had no self-worth. She's never had a good life, a laugh, or anything. Well, this couple comes into the orphanage, and they, one by one, they're, this man in particular is looking over these young boys and, and the hearts of this husband and wife. They wish they could take them all. And then this, the man, the husband, catches out of the corner of his eye this poor, sad girl. He looks at her, and his heart is just so moved just so moved that how, how in the world can such a child be left so abandoned and despised in this world? And he looked at his wife and said, this is the one, this is the one that I want. This is the one we're taking home. That little girl was so surprised, her hair dirty and unkept, her skin still showing all the boils and and discoloration of living on the streets and being mal, malnourished. She was chosen by this couple to become their daughter. And shortly thereafter, she left for her new life in the United States, a life that became a true blessing to undo all the damage that had been done to her. I want you to stop and think for a minute. We go through many things in life. We are scarred by the battles that we go through. We are damaged by sin. We are made ugly by the life that we live on the streets. Yet God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him, oh, will be saved. You know something? In spite of our ugliness, in spite of our sin, Jesus looked past all that, and he chose us, even though it's so undeserved. Do you follow what I'm trying to tell you about being adopted, being made heirs of Christ? I want to share with you another adoption story. This this one's kind of personal to me. Maybe it'll help you understand even more how God can do great and marvelous and just mysterious and things miraculous things in our lives. There was a woman in the year 1954 here in the United States. She was living in California, and she met a handsome United States Marine. She was living with her brother near 29 Palms, California. When she met this this man at a at the New Year's dance of nineteen fifty three going into nineteen fifty four, her heart was just taken. She knew she wanted to have this man in her life. She was around eighteen years of age and and just excited to meet this man. And she plotted and schemed ways to spend time with him and and actually plotted and schemed a way to become pregnant with him so they would be forced to be married, which is what her desire was. She had come up in a very difficult home life, a tragic home life where her mother had died at a young age and she saw nothing but heartache. And and when her dad remarried and she became basically the unwanted stepchild, it was just a miserable time for her. That's why she left her home on the East Coast to spend time with her.